Hola. Peace. Blessings and a whole lot of love. Goddess. 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 Idea. Sending out nothing but love and positive energy. This is my story about my hair. I did did a video. But I'm doing an updated video because some of the information there was wrong. I'm going to me diagnosing myself. So I thought that maybe it was alopecia leading to the... I thought it was scar alopecia. But I remember being diagnosed with seborrheic... I don't know if I'm saying it right. Seborrheic dermatitis. I was diagnosed with that in 2005, 2006, somewhere around there. But anyway, let's start from the beginning. I started losing my hair at the age of 27. Went to the get my hair done at the beauty parlor, and she had noticed thinning in the middle. So we thought that was, you know, um, a crip or con. I thought it was from um stress because I was having marital problems in my first marriage at this time when that was going on, and I just had my last child three years prior to this happening. So we treating it with cholesterol treatments and hot oil treatments and keep trying to reduce my stress level. And hear no more about the hair loss because I thought that's what it was from. So when I got 30, when I got 30, um, my sister was doing my hair. And she was like, my Amanda, you have a lot, a lot of dandruff on your scalp. And so she just, you know, was brushing it away. My whole hand had filled up. That's how much that was on my scalp. So she was like, yeah, your scalp don't look healthy neither. Okay. So we, you see, I said, you know what? I'm going to shave my hair. I'm going to treat it with some medicated shampoo for the dandruff and stuff. And, um... Start from scratch, and that's what I did. I, I went on vacation and I had cut my hair off. So when my hair grew back, first I put an S curl in it. And I was like, nah. Then I um, even though I put an S curl in it, it texturized. It wasn't curly. It was it wasn't it ain't even like really. It was a little curly, but not like I really wanted it. So end up lining that, cutting it off again, and allowing my locks to grow. So, this was all in like 2000, I think. So, I uh, started my locks, and um, by 2004, I had my locks was a nice length. So, anyway, I, let me backtrack. When we saw the flakes on my scalp, I had made a doctor's appointment. So, I was sent to see a dermatologist. So, he looks at my scalp. And he says, you have hair loss all over your scalp. So he started asking the history of my, the women in my family. I was like, yeah, my mom here is thinning. I think my grandma here is thinning. Because I remember her telling me she used Rogaine and some dip down her face. And she grew a little facial hair. Um, later, down, later down the line, I heard that my aunt, both two of my aunts had started losing their hair. But between my mother and my grandmother at this time, he was thinking that maybe it was hereditary. Then he asked me about the... The chemicals have I ever used chemicals such as relaxers, dyes. I was like, yes. Had my hair straightening when I was a little girl. Got my first relaxer when I was 16. After that, I started dyeing it. A few years later, um, I had cut my hair again. Then I started adding tracks to the hair. Because um, one time, you know, I had my cousin do my hair like this with short hair and longer hair. So she would add tracks with the glue. That way. So. As he was like, like I said, he said it could be hereditary, or it could be from the relaxers, the dye, and all the products that I used on my scalp when I shouldn't have. May have been a contributing factor to my hair loss. Okay, but I passed all the way to 2004, no, 2005 when I moved to Philly. My locks were nice length, as I said. I had developed my lymph nodes behind here and had swollen. So I go to the doctor. I tell her about that. She fell. She goes, do you have hair loss? Do you have dandruff? I was like, yes. She didn't even tell me to take off my... Wait, 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 wait. Let me back. Because I had a scarf on my head. 
So I had cut my lock. So actually, this wasn't in 2005 or six. 2005 or six, somewhere around there. Anyway, she didn't. She asked me to take off my key mark. I think I had. Yeah, I had. Well, my, no, I might have had a wig. I cut my locks by this time, so I probably had a wig on, or I, I could have converted to Islam. If I had a wig on at this time, or I had a key mark on, but she never asked to see my scalp. She just went based off that and. Her questions, so she diagnosed me with seborrheic dermatitis. I don't know if I'm saying it right. It's S E B O R R H E I C dermatitis, which was my thought was because of the dandruff, and I had lots of it, and it would be itchy and stuff like that. So then that's what she diagnosed me with, which is. Many infu and many infants get the cradle cap. This is a type of seborrheic um, dermatitis that develops in babies. Scaly, greasy patches form on a baby's scalp. The patches can become thick and crusty, but cradle cap is harmless. Cradle cap usually goes away on its own within a few months because my last child, my daughter, she had it, but she didn't have it only like maybe the first few um, months of her life. Um, then when she got older, she developed, she had dandruff, but we, we treating that sucker. It hasn't got, I haven't seen what happened to me, but I, I make sure she keep her, I make sure she keep her hair. She have a lot of hair. Make sure she keep her scalp moisturized all times. Back to the store, back to this article. So no matter where the several dermatitis form, it tends to permanently disappear between the ages of six months and a year. That's on little kids. But as for an adult, seborrheic dermatitis is long lasting in an adult, which I was never told. I didn't tell I wasn't told that I would lose my hair down the line. She treated it. She didn't tell me that I need to maintain this type of treatment. Just treated me and that was it. So all this time I was walking around with this disorder but because I was not properly taking care of my scalp. That's why the majority of my hair is gone because if I was told that this was a lifelong thing, because I a lifelong disorder, that I will be going through this for the rest of my life, had I been told that, then I could have been treating my hair and taking a little bit more care of my scalp. I washed my hair and stuff. Um, I had got sewing weaves back when my hair grew. I still had used some tracks. I had did the, the weave caps with the glue. So that's still touching your scalp. So that's probably just made it more worse. But no, I just was told that I had this. She treated the infection, told me to use some tea gel shampoo, and that was it. And I didn't go, I read on it, but I did not read all what I'm reading now. Had I known that, I probably would have hair on my head. So it says, um, it's a long life, a long lasting in adults. When adults, when adults get separated dermatitis, the condition can't come and go for the rest of the person's life. Flare ups are common when the weather turns cold and dry. Stress also can trigger a flare up. The good news is that treatment can reduce flare ups, bring release. Now, had I been educated that me going me losing my hair the majority of my hair if i don't follow the proper procedures or go to the doctor to get medicated med medication for my scalp no i just treat it when i would when i would have flare-ups when it were itch i would just treat it but maybe or well, when i like i said i was still getting those things done to my hair Head, i didn't do relaxes and stuff but i was still getting those those so ones and putting tracks with that glue and all that stuff on my hands. So that's probably just made what I have worse. And it says hair loss is closely associated with seborrheic dermatitis because it increased sebum production and can create irritation and inflammation of the scalp. And that's what happens with me. It increases the sebum production, which I won't have to look that up. 
which can cause intense itchy, itchiness, probably what, because I'm having a, a flare now, scratching the stuff, can damage the hair or the follows ooze, which obstructs natural hair growth, causing the hair to fall out. Excess sebum production can also cause an imbalance in the Malay sezia on the skin, which is a type of natural occurring yeast that can cause inflammation and further damage the hair follicles if produced is in excess and left untreated. Just like an increased sebum production, increased molasia production can cause hair loss. So I probably was having that when I was having those itch attacks, but didn't know it was could it, that it, it was caused by the buildup of this type of natural yeast. And I was just treating it with some shampoo when I probably needed something else. So that probably is the reason why my hair is gone and my scalp don't look great. So the causes of seborrhea dermatitis can be a weakened immune system, various medications, chronic stress, genetics, and pre-existing conditions including psoriasis, HIV, acne, Rosea, Parkinson's disease, depression, alcoholism, eating disorder, recovery from a stroke or heart attack. Now, before I developed this, I did have psoriasis, which was on my leg. I only had it one time on my body. All this is just related to eczema, just different types of it. But psoriasis, oh my God, I had a big red rash and it was painful. And that thing it took a long time to go away. And no medication for it. They had some soap for it and some damn cream. That, it used to be painful. So I did have that. I also had um, suffered from depression prior to that. So, several dermatitis have a direct impact on the scalp and the hair follicles, the ability to produce hair naturally, because this condition causes the sebaceous, sebaceous, sebaceous glands to secrete more sebum, sebum than usual. The symptoms are each a byproduct of excess oil on the skin and within the, the um, hair follicles. Common, I'm scratching out, common symptoms scaly skin, flaky skin, greasy patches of skin on the head, dandruff, itchy scalp, rash on the scalp, redness of the skin, inflammation of the skin, thin in the hair, and hair loss. The first, the first sign was the thin hair. Then came the dandruff. Then came the itchy scalp. Then came redness on the scalp, and then came the inflammation on the skin, the scalp, leading to thinning hair, leading to hair loss. To effectively treat seborrheic dermatitis and its symptoms, wait. With over-counter antifungal medications, natural treatment methods, and prescription medications. Um, Parithion zone zinc can be effective treatment for seborrheic dermatitis because it has um, antifungal, antibacterial properties in it. It's also infused into shampoo to treat the by by eliminating the fungi that causes itchy, flaky skin. It's also available in creams and face wash, depending on the location of the irritated skin. The potential side effects of pyrithion zinc, including a stinging or burning sensation of the scalp and skin peeling. Another uh, another treatment over counter selenium sulfide. I think I, I saw this in some type of shampoo. Um, can treat this by eliminating the yeast and reducing skin inflammation. It's available in medicated shampoos, creams, face washes, and body washes. The side effects can include skin irritation, oiliness, dryness, and increased hair loss. Another one is ketoconazole. It's a high, I don't know if I'm saying these words right, so excuse me. It's a highly effective agent used to treat fungal infections of the skin. And this ingredient is considered to be strong antifungal medication that stops to prevent the growth of fungi especially the ones that causes seborrheic 
Dermatia. See, I didn't have this information. All these different types of medicines that could have stopped or slowed down the progress and helped me with the itchiness and my and, and my scalp looking the way it does. So side effects include that was you must take that about the mouth because it includes nausea, vomit, stomach pain, dizziness, headaches, and skin rash. Then they got salicylic acid. Can't soften the scales on the head caused by the irregular sebum uh, production. Side effects may include burning, itching, sensation, and peeling of the skin. Then there are medicated shampoos you can use, which I did use. There's tropical quarter steroids that you can get. Um, then there's something, some type of inhibitor cream you can get. Like there's all these treatments and because I had, then I have the knowledge that I'm reading on now. When I started having those flare ups, I could have went to the doctor and got the proper treatment and maybe I wouldn't have had the rest of the flare ups and maybe I'll still have some heat on my head. So here's some triggers. Increased stress, cold weather, dry weather, hormonal changes, harsh ingredients. This condition itself is not treatable. Because seborrheic dermatitis is a chronic disease, it is likely to persist as a lifelong condition. Flare-ups may occur seasonally or when a person experiences periods of stress. The symptoms of this condition are treatable and the hair can grow back. That's provided that you didn't damage the hair follicle. Over-the-counter medications and tropical medications are available to cure the fungal infection on the skin to effectively treat the symptoms like hair loss caused by the infection. Hair will grow back once the source of the symptom inflammation is treated and the inflammation has to be treated before the scalp, the follicles get damaged. Because once the follicles is damaged, there's no hair growing out of there. So over 80% of my hair, my scalp is Close and you can feel it where it's closed at because it's going to it's going to feel really so shiny. It's going to feel um. It's going to look shiny and it's going to feel really really soft. So the right treatment for each parent will depend on their patient's lifestyle preference, their specific symptoms, and the severity of their condition. It's important to consider the potential risks and side effects of each treatment method before deciding on the treatment. If you experience the symptoms of seborrheic dermatitis, work with your dermatologist to create a personal treatment plan that treats your condition to effectively alleviate the symptoms. And this here was taken from um, ucfhealth.com, ucfhealth.com. And the reason why I'm sharing this video, because somebody may be watching this that might be experiencing um, hair loss, thinning of the hair, and then just and might not had proper diagnosis or might have been told it was hereditary or something like that and the whole time you have this problem so you're not getting a proper treatment and they end up like me losing the majority of your hair and then suffering from low self-esteem issues because society places so much pressure on hair that's why women out here getting all these ridiculous hair weaves and wearing these wigs somebody's this protective style when it's too lazy to do the damn hair because I did the same damn shit before I had all this happen to me. So, I did cut my hair off and I actually did a video without nothing on my scalp down there. So, that was the first step, but I'm still not there yet. I can walk around in front of my boyfriend like that or my, um, only my children my son's girlfriend and my boyfriend and my sister and my nephews will see my scalp. I um I go to people's house, I'm not taking whatever I had on my head off. Um I have yet to go outside or even sit on a porch with hot on my head and I'm going to work on that because I wanna to get to the point like people gonna fucking talk and those are just people ignorant ass people to sit there and um talk about somebody's somebody said when you don't know the condition 
of why their hair was like that. Or, you know, how people could be. be. So, I had to get to the point where I can't worry about what other people will say because it's all about me. I'm still Amanda. I'm still a beautiful woman that I am inside and out with or without hair. God is idea. Mm -hmm.